Uh, welcome back. I'm delighted to be joined by the head of Ofcom, top TV and media regulator. I suppose I better watch my step with you. Um, <laughs> uh, delighted to see you, Melanie. Um, a number of things about regulation uh, puzzle lots of people. Now, you'll have seen the uh, anger at the BBC, the controversy over the fact that it wouldn't refer to Hamas as a terrorist organisation. On ITV since the beginning, we have referred to them mm. as a terrorist organisation. Is this an impartiality issue? The BBC mm. says it is. So why can two broadcasters take a completely different position on mm. an issue like that? Well, look, it's, a good, it's a good question, and it's, it's good to be able to explain this on the show, mm. actually. I mean, in the end, um, what Ofcom doesn't do is get involved in decisions on particular language, particular wording. We're the regulator and we're here to make sure that overall programmes have got the right impartiality, particularly at a time like this. Mm -hmm. And that's about making sure that there's the right, you know, the right range of views and opinions brought to bear, yeah. but not particular language. And I think if we did get into that, even that would when be, you see, because obviously too within the Jewish community there's been a lot of upset with the BBC, even when you yeah. see that degree of upset, you, you don't get involved. So what we have done is speak to the BBC and I've spoken to Tim Davey myself to make sure that they are processing their complaints really quickly at a time like this. Mm. And, you know, when things go wrong and some mistakes have been made by the BBC and, and others actually as well, I think it's also very important that the broadcasters say and admit that something went wrong and are really transparent about that. The BBC has published quite a lot about how they're approaching this and I think that's a good thing, but they also need to, you know, as, as do all broadcasters, be really careful at a time like this to, you know, make sure that they attribute where facts are coming from and so on. Um, now, another puzzling issue for some of us, including me, it has to be said, is I spent my entire life thinking about what I can say and adhere to impartiality mm -hmm. rules. And then I look at another channel and I see the deputy chairman of the Conservative Party presenting a show that looks quite a lot like this one, and somehow that's allowed. Why is that allowed? Mm. Well, look, again, the test is overall impartiality, but, you know, it's, it's really important, again, to just, just remind ourselves, I think, about the need for freedom of expression as well mm -hmm. and diverse different types of programming. So, you know, there's a lot of opinion shows now on TV popping up on different channels. There are also, you know, other radio shows. For example, LBC has had politicians presenting shows for quite some time. So it's not a completely new phenomenon. No. What we look for at Ofcom is to make sure, as I was saying, that, you know, there's actually... A, you know, a good range of views represented, particularly when you're talking about important matters of public policy. And is and that if you've across got a, the day? It, so it's on a programme. It, it, it's not a, but how can there it's be a, a range of views expressed on a programme that's presented by uh, a very opinionated deputy chairman of the Tory party. Well, look, you've got to work a bit harder if you've got a politician presenting a show and make sure that you've got maybe a panel kind of challenging the views or that you've got, you know, other reporters or journalists bringing, you know, interviewing or, or reports to bear. So, you know, we've actually looked at a few programmes. We've, uh, we've actually written quite a bit about this already. We have a number of investigations open so there is work at in the moment on this. into GB News specifically. Yeah, absolutely yeah. there is. And, you know, it's clearly, you know, there's a lot of change going on. On. It's a new set of issues, and we're we're also asking audiences what they think about this because what we do always do that. In your view, think? What well, you... we're finding out. We don't we don't know yet. It's coming through in the next few weeks. But you know, this question of you know what's the difference between a current affairs show where you can have politicians present mm. as long as you've got those safeguards in place, mm. and news where the rules are clear they can't sure. present. You know, we, is that clear enough? We're asking audiences what they think right now because in the end, this is about the audience and about them getting really great program programming. Totally right. Now, you've got um, incredibly important powers when it comes not just to impartiality, but also all sorts of other issues to do with the media. One of the things that people are very worried about, particularly in this age of AI, mm. is the way that bad actors can distort elections mm -hmm. by putting up mm -hmm. fake videos, fake information. Mm -hmm. We've got a general election coming up uh, we think probably next autumn, not 100% certain. Um, will you have a role in trying to make sure that particularly the digital platforms mm. don't contain really malicious and distorting AI-generated content? Mm. So last week, you're probably aware, we came out with our first blueprint for social media and search as the new online safety regulator. Mm. And um, basically, Parliament legislate, has legislated some really big new rules. Mm. They're very comprehensive. 
And our first priority is to protect people from illegal harms like hate and terror mm. and stalking and so on online, and also critically to protect children. So that's the first thing Thank we've come right. out on. But one what of the about things... the integrity of elections and yeah. Politics? So, so one of the things we we definitely will be doing is holding, particularly the big platforms where we all spend our time. So this is companies like Facebook and Instagram and TikTok and and, and YouTube, where basically we know that's where the British public is most of the time. That's where we're spending mm. most of our our eyeball time. Um, making sure that where they have terms and conditions on disinformation, which they all do, that they actually stick to them They're and that we know a bit more about what's going on. That hasn't happened before. And I mean, Bob, you're very worried about bad actors, Russia and China. We all are. How big do you think the risk is that, particularly on social media, the elections will be distorted by essentially really, okay. you know, malign information being put up? Um, after 2014, September 2014, Putin organised a... Uh, a campaign of disinformation, systemic disinformation, through the Internet Research Agency up at St. Petersburg, one of Prigozhin Front organisations. And the whole point of that was to spread chaos and disinformation and disrupt the elections in the United States and elsewhere. So he was doing things like, or the Internet uh, Research Agency was doing things like setting up a pro and uh, anti-gun groups and getting them to have demonstrations in the same day, in the same place, mm. in the hope that that would spark violence and chaos. Um, and, and these so, new AI tools make no, that these, even more effective? Uh, absolutely, because you could do these yeah. things, you could make bots much more sophisticated, you could make bots, bots much more human-like. Mm. So it is absolutely a, an issue. I think it's an issue we haven't been across enough, and I think the Russians um, had a yeah. massive, significant march on us in 2014, 2016. Mm. We know about it now, but actually we still don't really take it in enough, and we don't understand how it's integrated into all other forms of Russian malign influence. John, I think you want to come There's in. bad actors here. Yeah. In the 2019 general election, mm. we had one site which was Labour Manifesto. It was a Tory front. They, well, I think we need to move towards the American model where there are organisations, when they're putting information out there, it needs to say paid for and on behalf of. In the same way we... And, and what about, but what about the idea of making yeah. sure that anything that claims to be authentic has a watermark of some exactly. sort on yeah. it that you can yeah. test in a very yeah. rigorous way. Yeah. Look, that's one of the solutions sure. that actually we're exploring at Ofcom and, and, and quite a lot of people are talking about, whether you can make that something that you can really roll out everywhere. Uh, I think that's one of the big questions. Um, but, you know, Bob's right. There is, there is foreign interference in mm. our elections and actually there's provisions in the new legislation and it's one of the big priority areas for us to, to, to try and get social media companies to do more on some of this. Have you got the to tackle it as effective as you might? Yeah, I mean, look, it's a really big job. Um, trying to kind of end the free-for-all on social media and search and pornography and it's game... An I mean, this is a, it's a big job. It is. It's huge and there's a lot of money made and it's a global industry. But, um, you know, we've got some fantastic people at Ofcom. Mm. I've got a brilliant team uh, who've come from all sorts of different places. They've come from the companies themselves, they're technologists, data specialists and so on. Mm. But also we're working internationally because we're not the only country that's looking into this now. We've got all of the European <laughs> we can't Union possibly also... Be. If, we, if we were, we'd be in real trouble. Yeah, um, although, you know, we are important in the UK. We're often the second course. biggest market, so we are going to be listened to. I'm confident of that. It's re reassuring.